Hi everyone, I'm here to talk about what I've been working on for the past couple weeks while I've been at the Blender Institute as part of Project Mango. What I have here is a video from the Hollywood VFX plates that shows some green screen action. Let's do some tracking. Okay, we got this nice little pink guy here. Let's put a marker on him. Scale it up so it covers the whole marker and track it through the frame. And look at that, it tracked through everything. So this marker, which is not just translating, it's deforming because of perspective, it is now tracked. So this didn't used to work. Previously, the translation only tracker would often fail on solves like this. So that's kind of neat. Uh, that's affine. There's another setting, which is real planar tracking. So let's do that over here. Let's take a patch on the post here and make the edges match. Okay, that looks like a plane. And let's change it to perspective and track it through. And look at that, real planar tracking. So that worked for a while and let's finish it back to the other end. Okay, so that's planar tracking. This is great. So. One thing that's nice about this is that while the corners might not be perfect, the center is generally estimated very accurately. So this makes for nice, high quality 3D solves. Uh, okay, let's look at another new feature that I added, which is illumination compensation. So you might notice that this lady here has a shadow on the green screen and that will interfere with tracking. Let's take a look at what happens if you try to track it without illumination compensation. So let's make this little marker here. This is maybe too much search area, so let's shrink it down. And let's take off this normalize button. Okay, let's track that. Track, 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 oh. And it fails right away. Now what happened? The issue is that because there is a shadow that covers the pattern, uh, this changes the cost function that the optimizer adjusts such that it can't figure out how to make the template match the current frame. So to fix that, I added this little normalize button here that internally tells the, the tracker that it shouldn't pay attention to global shifts in illumination between the two patches. So let's try this one. And we note that it tracks through the whole sequence. And you'll see that there is more than one shadow occlusion that happens through the sequence, but it still tracks. And an interesting fact is that the whole sequence is tracked from just a single keyframe. So this first frame is the one that is matched all the way to frame 307 or whatever it is uh, at the end. The previous tracker would not have been able to handle this. The astute listener might also notice that the corners are not accurately estimated. So you can see that the corners over here are jiggling around as we're tracking. Now, this would be problematic if we were relying on the scale parameters and the rotation from this track, but generally you don't need to use them. All that you need for camera tracking is to have an accurate center estimation. And you'll notice through the whole track that the center dot stays on the same part of the L marker through the entire sequence. And that's what you need for an accurate track. So even though the affine parameters make the corners jiggle around a bit, you will still get a good solve. Um, I'll, I'll do some work to make that maybe a bit smoother, but it works well enough today. And that's it. So this is currently in the tomato branch. It's not quite ready for trunk yet. We have some UI enhancements still to come uh, in addition to maybe some speed improvements. And then once we have it merged, it will go into 2.64 and you guys will be able to play with it. So uh, thank you for listening. Oh, and a thank you to uh, Sarah Solver, which is the new engine behind this, uh, this 2D tracker. So thanks Samir and those guys for, for that great stuff. Thank you. Bye.